Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Samsung Blu-ray and DVD players around the world are bricking themselves automatically. FIFA 21 will be the most realistic yet. Space exploration company SpaceX applied for a license to offer satellite-based service to rural areas in Canada. Google has quietly launched an AI-powered Pinterest rival named Keen. Apple is moving to ARM processors and Microsoft's Mixer streaming platform is dead. Stick around, the full details and this week's Crypto Corner are coming up. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. From the newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Samsung users, unplug your Ethernet. Millions of Samsung Blu-ray and DVD players are being bricked all around the world. Entertainment has become one of the biggest tools for keeping sane during these trying times, but while many companies are aggressively pushing their streaming services, others still prefer owning the media they buy in physical form. That mostly means DVDs and Blu-ray discs, which of course require appropriate devices to play them. But what if those devices all suddenly stop working for no apparent reason? That's the rather eerie and frustrating situation that owners of Samsung Blu-ray players are now experiencing, experiencing around the world with no answer or solution yet in sight. There doesn't seem to be any common denominator other than the fact that it's happening across a number of Samsung's Wi-Fi or Ethernet connected Blu-ray and DVD players. It doesn't appear to matter which model. The most common behavior reported is that the players reboot themselves after a few seconds, causing an inescapable boot loop. Others have reported hearing noises as if the players were reading empty disk slots. Given the mysterious and sudden appearance of the bug, some people have different theories on what caused it. Some blame an overnight firmware update, but the range of devices covered is so wide and random that it seems less likely. Some believe it may be an expired SSL security certificate in the firmware, which could explain why no amount of resetting the device to factory settings seems to work. Unfortunately, Samsung remains unresponsive despite the growing number of complaints, possibly due to how it happened during the weekend. Given global conditions, it's understandable how owners are not so amused, especially if it will require them to turn in the device for manual servicing. FIFA game developer EA Sports promises that the next generation version of FIFA 21 will feature new technology to make it the most realistic yet. The FIFA series remains one of the most popular video game franchises in the world. Next year's entry will release for both existing consoles as well as the new Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. But EA says the newer consoles will take advantage of more advanced technology. Despite regular criticism that the annual game is often very similar to the previous year's entry, it had sold over 260 million copies as of 2018. EA says its newest title will feature more lifelike player movements, which it says will be the most authentic character behaviors uh, ever seen in sports video games. The next generation editions will feature significantly reduced loading times, and the PS5 version will take advantage of haptic feedback on the consoles. DualSense controller. New rendering and lighting techniques will also help to increase the overall realism of the game. Fans in the stadium stands will also be more interactive, even participating in celebrations. FIFA 21 will be released worldwide in October before the new consoles launch. The PS5 and Xbox Series X versions with their advanced features will be available later, but EA is offering a path to players who buy the game on the previous generation early. Sadly, Nintendo Switch gamers won't get to experience any of the franchise's new models or gameplay innovations. The lower-powered portable console will instead get a Legacy Edition release that will include only new kits and teams and an updated menu and overlay system. EA has promised to reveal more about the game in the coming months. Elon Musk's SpaceX has applied to offer high-speed internet to Canadians living in remote areas using satellite technology. Last 
year, SpaceX has launched more than 500 satellites into Earth orbit to build its Starlink mega constellation, which aims to make satellite internet available from practically anywhere on the planet. SpaceX applied with Canada's telecom regulator, the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission, CRTC, for what's known as a Basic International Telecommunications Services, or BITS, license. That's a requirement for any company that wants to offer what the CRTC calls telecommunications traffic between Canada and any other country. If they are successful in getting a BITS license, that means SpaceX, whose formal company name is Space Exploration Technologies Corp., could theoretically try to offer more wireless telecom services down the line, such as voice and data plans. But for now, the application focuses on high-speed internet beamed directly into rural homes and businesses via the company's existing network of so-called near-Earth satellites. Canada is far from the only place SpaceX is trying to offer internet service. The company is planning to offer high-speed internet services in the United States later this year through a subsidiary known as Starlink, before rapidly expanding to near-global coverage of the populated world by 2021, as they say on the company website. CRTC data suggests as many as 40% of Canadians who don't live in major urban areas do not have access to high-speed internet, and what is available is often prohibitively expensive. The issue has taken on increased importance during the COVID-19 pandemic, as millions of Canadians find themselves working from home with seemingly no end in sight. The application was filed in May, and the, de and the deadline for public comment was last Friday. More than 1,200 Canadians have weighed in on the proposal, a large number of them in support of it. Elon Musk says the new service won't require a special installer. There's just two instructions, and they can be done in either order. Point at sky, plug in. Starlink hopes to make its services available worldwide, and you can receive a notification once it's available in your area by signing up at Starlink.com. Google has launched an artificial intelligence-powered Pinterest killer? Mm, at least competitor called Keen. Also, Apple is switching to ARM processors and Microsoft is shutting down its Mixer streaming video service. Becca's got those stories coming right up. And also Robert Koenig, our crypto correspondent, is here with the Crypto Corner. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to the Crypto Corner. This week, we've got some interesting news for you. But as usual, let's start looking into the market. How did the market perform in the last seven days? As we can see, no big changes here. Last week, it was a draw on 274 billion. Today, or currently, it's 278 billion. Uh, Bitcoin had an increase of 2.4% in the last seven days. But if we sort this year by seven days, we see suddenly compound increasing by 292%. There are over 20 coins that had an increase of over 15%. And on the downside, only two coins lost more than 15%. So what happened here? Why is there suddenly such a big change? And if we look into the DeFi market cap, because Compound is part of the DeFi market, we see that most of those changes are coming from uh, Compound. So last week I showed you this, uh, this chart. And it was at 2.3 billion, now it's 6.7 billion. As you can see, most of that is coming from Compound. Now, <clears throat> let's dive a little bit deeper into this here and check what happened. And if we take a look at the Compound plat uh, platform, so Compound.finance, we see it's basically like a bank. So you can supply money <clears throat> to the environment or you can borrow money. And in the case of, let's say, BAT, uh, Basic Attention Token, you will receive 27%, and if you borrow money, you have to pay 34%. So far, everything is fine. Now, last week, uh, Compound was listed on Coinbase, and that caused a huge increase in price. And because of that, this environment went absolutely crazy. And the reason is that every time you take out a loan or receive money, you'll be compensated with COMS, which is the native token of uh, this platform. So you'll receive 
money, in other words, if you take out a loan. And to check that, there's another website called predictions.exchange. And if I say I want to have 1,000 here, so enter 1,000 uh, basic attention token and I do calculate, then I see that I will receive on top of those $1,000, I will receive 17% uh, interest. So I don't have to pay interest. I will receive 17% interest. Now, <clears throat> some people are clever and they take that money and put it back into the system. And that's called uh, yield farming. And with yield farming, you can achieve um, uh, interest of uh, over 100%. Now, I have to clearly say at this stage, so it's a huge disclaimer. What you're hearing here is not financial advice. This is a very young industry. Um, it's guided by software and there are plenty of bugs in software and also it can be hacked. So it's a very risky uh, environment. And if you don't understand the details of what is happening here, please do not invest any money. Even small amounts can be dangerous because the fees uh, can be as high as $15 for one transaction. So just to give you an example of why uh, one has to be careful, here's somebody that put uh, money into the system and took out, so he was doing yield farming, and then suddenly realized that he had much less money available, and the reason is that he was liquidated because of uh, the interest uh, that he didn't consider. And this is a hard environment. It's guided by software, and um, if you don't have enough collateral in the system, you will be liquidated. There's nobody that will call you and say, hey, you need to put money in this year, so you're not you're not liqui you're not being liquidated, and that's why you have to be really uh, please be careful. I'm showing this to you because DeFi as such is a market that is uh, coming. As you can see, it's completely different to what you are accustomed to as a bank customer, but it's the future. Yeah, it's decentralized, which means there is no entity behind this year. It's completely autonomous uh, from any federal uh, institution or financial institution and it's global so everybody in the world can participate here in other words you can be your own bank by putting money into it and taking money out but as mentioned you need to understand what this is about and so as long as you don't understand things like what is Aave, what do they do what's uh, wbtc wrapped btc ren btc uh, dydx uh, wrapped eth all those things, if you don't understand what ha is happening here, um, please don't put money, any money into that. Um, there is no, there is no customer service that you can call in case uh, something goes wrong. But as mentioned, this is the future. This is where finance will go to because uh, it cuts out the middleman, it cuts out the bank. Um, and uh, you can do business directly and it's secured because it's secured through the Ethereum blockchain. So um, more, to, more is to come in this in, uh, industry, more is going to be invented. And yeah, anyway, that, that's it uh, from uh, me this week. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short uh, excursion into the DeFi market, the news of, on what's happening there. And uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next week again. So thank you. Bye-bye. Well, thanks, Robert. Always appreciate your insight. Uh, just a reminder for those of you watching at home, we are not providing basically financial investment advice. What we're doing is we're giving you the information about the cryptocurrency market and leaving it up to you to make the decisions. And now back to Becca. Thank you, Robbie. Google's Area 120 team, an internal incubator that creates experimental apps and services, has launched Keen, a would-be Pinterest rival that draws on the search giant's machine learning expertise to curate topics. Available on the web at staykeen.com and on Android, co-founder CJ Adams says Keen aims to be an alternative to mindlessly browsing online feeds. Adam writes in a blog post, On Keen, you say what you want to spend more time on and then curate content from the web and people you trust to help make that happen. You make a Keen, which can be about any topic, whether it's baking delicious bread at home, getting into birding, or researching typography. Keen lets you curate the content you love, share your collection with others, and find new content based on what you have saved. Pinterest has already captured the hobby-focused side of this market with its pinboard-style visual design. 
two characteristics that Keen is trying to imitate, but Keen has Google's ex expertise in machine learning, which Adam says will surface helpful content related to your interests. Google has never been able to break into the social space, a venue of online activity that generates scads of lucrative data for targeting ads. A Pinterest-style social network would really allow it to hone in on users' interests and gather this information. And it does seem that data collected by Keen is being collated with everything else Google knows about users. You log into Keen using your Google account and clicking on the site's privacy link just points you to the Google-wide privacy policy. It's interesting to see Google push its machine learning systems into more varied applications, especially those that seem like they're trying to foster users' interest in rewarding hobbies rather than algorithms that drive people to greater engagement without caring what it is they're actually engaging with. Will you give Keen a try? Are your interests such that you don't mind Google knowing what you're into? Comment below if you're watching online or hop onto our website to post your thoughts. On episode 648, just seven weeks ago, we talked about how Apple plans to drop Intel for its own processors for future Macs. But it came as a surprise Monday that these processors will be ARM-based. It's a big move, and perhaps the biggest addition the transition to ARM-powered chips brings is the ability for iOS and iPad apps to run natively on Mac OS in the future. Apple says most apps will just work, meaning you'll be able to run native Mac OS apps alongside native iOS apps side by side. Apple is promising new levels of performance and far less power consumption when it, with its move to in-house processors. Apple is designing its own range of SoC for Macs with unique features to Mac, but a common architecture across product lines. Microsoft is working on Office updates for the new Mac Silicon, and Word and Excel are already running natively on the new Mac processors, with PowerPoint even using Apple's Metal Tech for rendering. Apple has always been also been working with Adobe to get their photo edit editing apps up and running on the new chips. Mac OS Big Sur will also include a new version of Rosetta. Apple used Rosetta previously for the PowerPC shift to Intel-based Macs, and Rosetta 2 will automatically translate ex existing apps at install time. This means that even if developers haven't fully updated their apps, they should still work without modification. Apple is also using virtualization for running versions of Linux on these new Macs. Apple's transition to ARM follows a similar move by Microsoft to experiment with Windows on ARM nearly a decade ago. Microsoft started this work ahead of the Windows 8 release in 2012 and even released the Windows RT operating system that was designed for ARM-based hardware. Microsoft has since transitioned Windows 10 to ARM as well. Apple will release the first Mac with Apple Silicon at the end of this year, and it expects the transition to take two years. New Intel-powered Macs are still in the pipeline, so Apple isn't moving exclusively to ARM-based Macs just yet. Microsoft is shutting down Mixer, its video game live streaming platform, in a move that will affect streamers from Tyler Ninja Belvins on down. In a statement released on Mixer's official blog on Monday, the streaming service announced that it will be shuttering its operations side and will help Mixer streamers transition to Facebook gaming. Starting on July 22nd, Mixer.com will redirect to FB.gg. In a similar statement on its blog, Facebook Gaming noted that Mixer streamers that choose to move to Facebook gaming will be matching partner agreements as closely as possible. Most famously, Ninja had signed an exclusivity deal with Mixer in August 2019 for reportedly around $20 to $30 million per year. In an interview with The Verge, Microsoft's head of gaming, Phil Spencer, said that the move to shut down Mixer was a strategic one. Spencer said, It wasn't as much about return on sell, it was about finding a partnership, partnership that was the best things for the community and streamers. We think this is it and it gives us a great place to launch more xCloud content and give gamers the ability to play from there. While media is focused almost entirely on the result to streamers, the fact remains Mixer is closing down without so much as notifying its staff. Trust and safety staffer Jazuki said on Twitter Monday, Guys, we had no clue. I found out with the rest of you. I am devastated. I have dedicated all I have to this platform and this hurts immensely. 
According to Microsoft, Mixer's intellectual property and staff will be transferred to the Microsoft Teams division on July 22nd, but Jazuki make it sounds like that's not the case at all. She's tweeting a call for employers to reach out to her if they're looking to hire a strong-willed, empowered female who focuses on efficiency and high productivity with a team mentality. And she retweeted I am Brandon, who said there are a lot of people out of jobs now due to Mixer closing. During a pandemic, what the H-E-L-L. Launched in January 2016 as Beam, Mixer was renamed after its acquisition by Microsoft in 2017. The platform's attempt to compete with Twitch resulted in the signings of major Twitch streamers such as Ninja and Shroud for huge monetary deals. Despite these moves, Mixer was unable to significantly approach Twitch's larger audience numbers. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category5.tv newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron, patron at patreon.com slash category5. From the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson.